Now on 767 News, Plant Protection and Quarantine Unit places importation ban on leafy produce after discovering an increase in invasive pests. Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court of Appeal concludes its sitting in Dominica, leaving several cases to be retried. More pronouncements made at political rallies. And in sports, numerous matches planned for Dumlek Women's League. Welcome, I'm Alicia George and you're watching 767 News. Stay with us as we bring you the latest developments coming up right after the break. Ho, ho, ho! Is it ram that I want to pull up me belly? Is it ram that I want to bat in me party? Play Big Four and win even more this Christmas. Spend $9 or more on Big Four tickets and get a free letter. Spell ham, rum, or buy. And win hams, single barrel rum, and shopping vouchers. Plus, non-winning promotional tickets gets a chance to win one of four supermarket shopping sprees. Valued at $1,000. The more tickets you buy, the more letters you get to win. Oh, 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 oh. Have a cheerful ham and rum Christmas from the Dominican National Lottery. Promotion starts November 10th to December 31st. When you serve your family chocolate, they'll be getting a tasty drink. That's good for them. They'll love the taste. So delicious and chocolatey. With vitamin A, B1, B2, B3, and vitamin D. With niacin, calcium, and iron too, they will drink nutritiously. And you will love the value because Chocolisto gives you great taste and nutrition at a very affordable price. So say goodbye to high prices and say hello to Chocolisto. An affordable nutrition in a tasty drink. Had us the fans. Right place, right price. The best season of them all has started only at Courts. Shop today and get free gifts with the purchase of selected products. Get a chance to win $8,000 in cash when you purchase any Frigidaire appliance. Shop with Courts, ready finance and pay absolutely nothing for 60 days. So come in today and make this the best season ever. Only at Courts, bringing value home. Welcome back. First up this news time, the Plant Protection and Quarantine Unit headed by Ryan Anselm has imposed an importation ban on leafy vegetables to Dominica. In a statement released on Monday, Anselm said the unit under the Ministry of Agriculture has decided to implement safety and interception policies of pests that affect leafy vegetables. What we have done as a unit, we have put temporary restriction on the importation of leafy vegetables. This includes lettuce, cabbage, kale, cilantro, cauliflower, broccoli. We have engaged our main importers. We have several meetings with them and we have emphasized the requirements, the phytosanitary requirements that is for the importation of these leafy vegetables. And some contributed this ban to a recent discovery of an increase in invasive pests to Dominica, a discovery that could cause major problems to the economy and agriculture on island. In a bid to reverse this invasion, Anselm is encouraging all farmers to expand their production order to sufficiently supply our local markets. So we are encouraging our farmers to plant, to engage the importers, um, save a lot, um, which is as the fans, to engage them in providing fresh local grown vegetables that we all can benefit from, from, from the trade of um, vegetables and fruits on the island. In the months coming, so we will heighten the awareness and work with the farmers to produce these vegetables. The extension officer will engage and provide the necessary technical information that will guide the production of um, vegetables so that the farmers can benefit and all of our local people will eat healthy local grown vegetables. The restriction took effect on November 1st, 2014. Anselm said that a zero tolerance approach will be adopted during this time. And the Dominica Youth Business Trust, DYBT, held a youth forum on agro-processing today, Tuesday, in light of many young people who remain unconvinced about being farmers and agriculturists. The forum, administered under the theme Connecting with the Agro-Processing Sector, encouraged entrepreneurs to get connected to a new business idea, 
contacts and support in their local communities. Speaking at the event, trustee of DYBT, Lydia Andrew, pointed out that a large portion of the world's population remains unemployed. She said, according to the International Labour Organization, ILO, young people are three times more likely to be unemployed than adults, with over 73 million youths seeking employment opportunities. Most young persons in the Caribbean face little prospects of obtaining em employment in the formal sector and as a result turn towards entrepreneurship, the only plausible alternative. Andrew believes that entrepreneurship, particularly for young people, is a key driver to developing human capital. The DYBT trustee urged those present to take advantage of the many institutions that provide a doorway for entrepreneurial opportunities here in Dominica. Young people, I urge you to be innovative. Think outside the box. Challenge yourself. Be abreast with, your co with current issues. Study the market. Provide excellent customer service. Be positive. Be open to positive criticism. And finally, give 100% in everything you do. To date, DYBT has trained 500 entrepreneurs, with 100 being provided with financial assistance. The forum was organized as part of activities for the observation of DYBT's Global Entrepreneurship Week. Newly re-elected president of the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association, DHTA, Gregor Nassif, says the budget for Dominica's marketing needs to be increased. He said this is one of the areas that needs attention in order for improved results in Dominica's tourism industry over the next three to five years. We spend approximately um, four, four million um, EC dollars a year on destination marketing. Um, St. Lucia spends about 40 million. Barbados spends about 135. Now, obviously, we cannot and should not as aspire to those uh, levels of expenditure. But our tourism master plan calls for an annual expenditure of approximately 12 um, million and we should certainly try to approach that. Nassif said Dominica must completely change its marketing strategy from the perception that we compete only with local establishments but work on defining a world-class experience and market to its fullest extent. The DHDA president said if we aspire for Dominica to be marketed as a destination, persons involved in the tourism industry should sell the Dominica experience to all visitors. The island desperately needs investment, specifically in the area of increasing the number of quality rooms that we have. For us to do this, we need a more enabling environment. Um, in terms of our transfer taxes, our stamp um, duties, VAT, and our um, energy rates. These are extremely high when, when compared um, regionally. So we must, um, we must focus on changing that to attract the necessary investment that the island needs. Product development and air access were two other important areas that need immediate attention. And leader of the United Workers' Party, Team Dominica, Lennox Linton, says the role of women in politics should not be understated and efforts must be made to include more women in the governance of the country. He made that observation when he addressed a Women for Change rally in the village of Kalibishi on Sunday. Linton says the United Workers' Party stands firm in the support of women in parliamentary roles and has projected that the number increase by 40%. Here we are. The party that has pledged to defeat the politics of Mapui hate and prejudice, actually clearing the way for there to be more women candidates on the slate of the other party that spends its time doing all the denigration, all the demonization, all the dehumanization, why women are afraid to come forward. But because of who we are, and because of what the women have seen from us over the past year, they don't have any difficulty 
going on the ticket of the Labour Party because they know we will respect them. They know we will stand for them. They know they will not be denigrated. They know they will not be demonized. They know they will not be dehumanized. At the same time, in this very cruel irony, women are afraid to stand with us because the animal show will take them apart, because the ministers of government will disrespect them and tell them about cow meat and tell them all kinds of derogatory things which we, which we stand against. However, however, we are fully committed to continuing the path that we have set for ourselves and to ensure that in the next election there will be a minimum of 40 percent of the candidates on the slate as female candidates all around dominica that is our goal that is what we strive for because we know the talents and we know the capabilities of our women we know the role they play in the society Meantime, Linton endorsed the UWP candidate for the Paybush constituency, Unica Anthony Victor, saying that she is the most suitable candidate who will represent the needs of the people at that constituency. Your candidate for this constituency, Paybush, Tibo, Benz, Hans de May, and Solda, and Kalibishi. Your candidate for the next general election is one of the outstanding women on United Workers Party Team Dominica, an attorney by profession, a global citizen, competent in her chosen field, willing to stand for you with honesty and integrity, willing to listen to you and be the best representative you have ever seen in this constituency. That is your representative. We are proud to put her into your capable hands. And we're looking forward to your overwhelming support on the 8th of December for Unica Anthony Victor. Unica Anthony Victor is one of two candidates contesting the December 8th general elections on a UWP ticket. The other candidate is Monel Williams, who will represent the St. Joseph constituency. These two UWP candidates will join four female candidates on a DLP ticket in the upcoming general elections. This is the first time in Dominica's political history that a total of six female candidates will contest the election at any given time. The Women for Change rally in Kalibishi was hosted by UWP candidates in the upcoming general elections, Monel Williams and Unica Anthony Victor. It was designed to bring to the fore the importance of women in political life. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt says if the government were to subsidize the price of fuel, it would certainly be a dangerous move. He said although the private sector has concerns about the high cost of energy, a resolution will require a multi-sectoral approach. I am the, almost like a lone ranger, making a case for the private sector. And when I'm looking back, I'm saying, well, where's the private sector to push me and so on? I'm not seeing the private sector in regards to energy. And I, you have to be more um, prominent with your statements of support on the government's efforts with geothermal. I mean, we have spent $54 million in the Worst recession to modern, known to modern man, $54 million. Exploring geothermal with a view to taking advantage of it to pass on the benefit to you because your greatest challenge is your high cost of your electricity bill. And you cannot survive with the high cost of electricity bill because most of your money you, you're working for dumb like. He said Dominica is not blessed with oil reserves and as such must import fossil fuels, which has a fright on board board FOB price that cannot be changed by the government. Even if you were to take a decision, the, the economy cannot sustain it. So we, this, is a, this is another area that I would have loved to hear a, 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 a plain statement, not, well, we support, but we hope this, we hope that, and so on and so on. If we support, say we support categorically, and so that we can be motivated. So I normally ask the cabinet, but look, I may not hear these people um, speaking about this thing. I heard a statement here or there, and it is always not, not direct. 
The Prime Minister said his DLP government, if re-elected, will forge ahead the geothermal exploration project, which will bring lower fuel costs for Dominicans. Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court of Appeal concludes its sitting in Dominica, leaving several cases to be retried. More details when 767 News returns. When it comes to health and beauty products, nothing beats the skincare, hair care, and beauty products from Lander. For babies, try Lander's baby oil, baby powder, petroleum jelly, and baby shampoo. For the rest of the family, use Lander body lotions and Lander body washes, shampoos and conditioners, which are available in a range of scents. And for spotless and flawless skin, use Lander's vanishing cream. Come into Estefans and select the Lander beauty products to satisfy everyone in your household. Estefans, right place, right price. You have a sense of style. It's elegant. It's chic. It's modern. It's timeless. At Quartz, we have the widest range of furniture to suit any style. So you're sure to find something that's you. Furniture is fashionable only at Quartz. Bringing value home. Boom, Miss and I, it's my time to get on bad when I jam in and everybody come celebrate with me. But if you don't know me yet, the worry man, we go take a jam in a party. Yeah. Put one on in the air. 767 News. Thanks for staying with us. The Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court of Appeal concluded its sitting in Dominica on Friday, leaving several cases to be appealed. Kislon Yuzeb, who appealed a magistral sentence, has his appeal allowed after his attorney Sonda Cyrus submitted to the Justices of Appeal that the sentence was excessive. On February 4, 2014, Yuzeb pleaded guilty to theft and was fined $500, payable in three months, ordered to pay compensation of $2,500, and restitution was also ordered for the gold chain. She stated that it should have been one of the two and not both, and therefore believes that the fine and only restitution should have been granted. State Attorney Shuma Dalrimpo, representing the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, conceded that compensation ought not to be made with restitution, and only the restitution order and the fine should stand. In his judgment, Justice Mario Michel agreed that the magistrate imposed a threefold sentence and compensation with restitution was unfair and inappropriate. It was ordered that the compensation be set aside and the $500 fine plus restitution stand. Another case involving Kenrick Tyson was also successfully appealed. Tyson's high court conviction for murder and a retrial was ordered by the justices of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court of Appeal. He was sentenced to life in prison in 2012 after he was found guilty of murdering Cecile James of Concord between the 9th and 10th of May 2009. It was alleged that he had struck the deceased in the head with a piece of 2 by 4 lumber. Before the justices on Monday, Wayne Nordy appealed on the grounds that the trial judge, Justice Bernie Stevenson, had failed to give the jury proper directions on the status of the state's key witness, Nasha Daniel, ex-girlfriend of Tyson, as an accomplice, stating that this was fatal to his client. During the High Court trial, Tyson had implicated Daniel, stating that she too had hit the deceased James. State Attorney Shuma Dalrymple submitted that the absence of directions by the judge did not make the conviction unsafe because, according to Dalrymple, the judge had warned the jury about Daniel's evidence. President of the panel, Justice Louise Blenman, noted that this was one of the strongest cases which required the judge to give accomplice directions. She said the way the judge treated the evidence of Daniel was unacceptable and fatal, and the law is very clear on the matter. In judgment, Justice Blenman ruled that the trial judge erred in not giving proper directions, stating that where Daniel was the only witness to the crime, the judge ought to have given accomplice directions since Tyson had indicated that Daniel had participated in the murder. Justice Blenman said the conviction could not stand and it is unsafe, allowing the appeal, quashing the murder conviction and ordering a retrial. The next sitting of the appeals court will be from June 15th to 19th, 2015. 
In other stories, Nicholas George, United Workers' Party, UWP candidate for the Quali Ho constituency, has expressed distaste with a statement made by Honorable Prime Minister Ruth Wells Skerritt during a Dominican Labour Party rally in Trafalgar. During the rally, Prime Minister Skerritt called the UWP candidates a bunch of lazy men and women. Speaking at a UWP rally to endorse Felix Thomas in Mahu on Saturday, George says he takes offense to such a statement. I do not believe that it is the prerogative of an outgoing Prime Minister to insult the citizens of Dominica. I gave 40 years of my life to my country. I serve with distinction. I serve with pride and I serve with honor. I fought in the Grenada War to bring peace in the region when this gentleman was being nurtured as a child. And I think he is out of place and he's outraged me. He is out of place to call me a lazy person. George said if the Prime Minister was to refer to him again as lazy, he should be charged for promoting a lazy person to serve and protect in his administration. He said as a serving police officer, he has had the greatest respect for Prime Minister Skerritt. I am a proud Dominican and I have a constitutional right to speak my mind in my country. I have a right to stand up for what I believe. I believe in justice for all, social and economic. I believe in equal rights, and I believe in growth and development for our country. And when I listen to the outgoing Prime Minister refer to me as a lazy person, I take exception to this. I have had the greatest respect for you. As a serving policeman, I serve with you. I honored you, I saluted you, and I would have taken a bullet for you. And even now, I am retired if somebody is threatening you, as Lady has done, by saying that she is not you, by stabbing you in your back. I refuse to allow Lady to stab you in your back. And instead of being grateful to me, you stand in a podium and call us lazy. The UWP candidate further stated that the DLP contender running against him has spoken nothing of her plans for the constituency. We want to be represented by people who are proud to serve their country. We don't want people to come by night and to be nominated and not tell us what they stand for and then go to parliament and say they're representing us. George called on his opponent, Lady Catherine Daniel, to join him in a debate and stand for what is right, like the person he knows her to be. And former Antiguan government minister, Joanne Messiah, is advising Dominicans to exercise their right to vote as the government will remain for the next five years. She spoke on Sunday when the United Workers' Party, UWP, hosted its Women for Change rally in the community of Kalibishi. I want to remind those listening that the only constant in life is change. The only constant. And I also want to remind that John F. Kennedy, former president of the United States said, change is the law of life. And those who only look to the past or the present are certain to miss the future. Now, as we reflect on the theme, women rising for change, I want to congratulate several persons who through their actions have brought life to this statement. First, I want to congratulate Monel Williams. And Unica Victor. Who came forward to offer themselves as candidates. She said the statistics, the facts and experiences have and continue to prove that women's ability to participate equitably in the decision-making and leadership processes is a key prerequisite to transparent, democratic, and participatory governance. Messiah, who is also an attorney at law, said this is essential for achieving sustainable development. She also had words of encouragement to the women at the rally. You must be bold. You must
must be fearless. You must be vocal in demanding of our governments the right to an equal say in matters which impact our lives. You know, the reality is that our governments continue to sign conventions, treaties, and agree to resolutions which promise the full and equal participation of women in the electoral process. And we must hold their feet to the fire to make sure that what they promise overseas, they come back right here and create the environment that will make these things become real. Messiah stated, although there are a number of issues making it difficult for women to enter the political arena, the two female candidates for the UWP, Monel Williams and Unica Victor, must be commended for their participation. She said the perception that pol politics is a man's domain should be reversed, as women do and have been making positive impacts in government. And several individuals stood to endorse United Workers' Party UWP candidate for the Maho constituency, Felix Thomas, including former constituency parliamentary representative Julian Prevo at the UWP rally on Saturday. Prevo, for those of us who are unfamiliar, contested and won the by-election of August 12, 1996 and served as a UWP par rep for the Mahu constituency up until the party's defeat. He told the crowd of Blue supporters that during his political years, Thomas had always been by his side, helping in the development of the communities. He gave me a lot of ideas when we were building platforms so that we could put the skipping Felix was there lending me plywood, like giving me material. When we were planning road construction, Felix was there. We know Felix, it's Felix we know, and it's Felix we grow. We know his parents and his grandparents. All of them were involved in the development of the constituency. During his three and a half years as par rep, the UWP hopeful, he said, helped break grounds and construct new roads in Warner and Jimit, allowing residents to sell some of their lands and develop the individual areas. The former politician pointed out that after many years in power, the Dominica Labour Party has failed to present new ideas to the people which will grow the economy. We need new ideas, ladies and gentlemen. We need new people leading this country. And we need this country to go forward. For 15 years, this country's development has been stagnated. This government has been groping in the dark for 15 years without any plan to move this country forward. Team Dominica is coming, and you have heard their plans, ladies and gentlemen. And they, are, they have been preaching it through. And I am very confident in the leadership of Lennox Linton and of the team, and Felix Thomas will bring this constituency home. Felix Thomas is a project manager and contractor by profession and the UWP candidate for the Maho constituency in the December 8th general elections. And that's all for local news. The latest in sports is coming up next with Larry, so stay tuned. Ho, ho, ho! Is the wrong that I want to pull up my belly? Is the wrong that I want to bat in the party? Play Big Four and win even more this Christmas. Spend $9 or more on Big Four tickets and get a free letter. Spell ham, rum, or buy. And win hams, single barrel rum, and shopping vouchers. Plus, non-winning promotional tickets gets a chance to win one of four supermarket shopping sprees. Valued at $1,000. The more tickets you buy, the more letters you get to oh, win. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Have a cheerful ham and rum Christmas from the Dominican National Lottery. Promotion starts November 10th to December 31st. Swimming? Yeah, I like swimming. Eh? Dancing? Yeah, I love dancing. I love hanging out with my girls. I really miss them. My home. And football too? I like football. I ain't too good. Eh? but I have some skills. At the same time, I'm scared. 
What if they don't miss me or care about me? Oh, yeah, and Papo, he's the first person I want to hug when I get out. But he don't come and see me. I guess he's ashamed. I'm lost. What if? For youth offenders, not knowing if we still love them is more than punishment. Give them hope beyond bars. Good evening and welcome to 767 Sportscast. We begin tonight's coverage of football. The Dominica Football Association has scheduled four matches in the Dominic Women's League this week. Public Relations Office of the Dominica Football Association, Gerald George, has the lineup. Wednesday, defending champions New India Goodwill Runners will take on Mao Suka Strikers at the Windsor Park Stadium from 6 p.m. as both teams look to maintain their unbeaten run. On Tuesday, it will be West Coast Jaguars versus Bomber Starlight at the Caesar Grounds in Mao from 6 p.m. with both teams going in search of their first victory for the season. On Saturday, defending champions New India Goodwill Runners and the Dive Dominica Harlem United which at the Buffer Street playing field at 5 p.m. And on Sunday, Wood City Strike will against West Coast Jaguars, also at the Buffer State playing field at 4 p.m. And in cricket, the Guyana Jaguars are leading the points table after the first round of matches in the WICB Professional Cricket League Regional 40 tournament, which ended on Monday. The points are as follows. Guyana Jaguars, 17. Jamaica Franchise, 16. Barbados Pride, 8. TNT Red Force, 5. Windward Volcanoes, 3 and Leeward's franchise too. Round 2 is scheduled from November 21st to 24th. Round 3 is scheduled from November 20th to December 1st. Round 4 is scheduled from December 5th to 8th. Round 5 is scheduled from February 6th to 9th. Round 6 is scheduled from February 13th to 16th. Round 7 is scheduled from February 20th to 23rd. Round 8 is scheduled from March 6th to 9th. Wrong 9 is scheduled from March 13th to 16th, and Wrong 10 is scheduled from March 20th to 23rd. And that's it for tonight's sportscast. Join us again tomorrow for more sports news. That was Zari with the latest in sports. And that's all the time we have for now. Drop us an email at media at 767news.dm. Friend us on Facebook and be sure to like our 767 News page. From all of us here on the 767 News production team, I'm Alicia George. Thanks for watching.